You are watching the Big Dog Post Game Show, brought to you by Viner Four Gates and the Big Dog himself, Rick Jacklich at the Jacklich Law Group. Good afternoon from Philadelphia. This is the Big Dog Post Game Show here at the Final Four. Along with me, Wayne Viner, is Bruce Posner, as always. Bruce, that was a thriller ending. What did you see out there? Controversy exists. I don't know if it was a goal. It did not look like a goal. Remember, the ball has to be in the back of the net, Wayne, before he hits the ground. And uh, the guy Ledman, Gary yeah. Ledman, made a great dodge. But I don't know, but it doesn't matter now because Duke's gone to the finals. We've been, Maryland's been there before. But listen, what a great, great game. T.J. Malone for Penn State was absolutely unbelievable. Agree? Yeah, I, I believe I believe he was unbelievable. He was unstoppable. Seven, seven points, right? He's got five goals, two assists. He might even had one more. I lost track into the fourth quarter. He was dominant on offense. And Brendan O'Neill did disappoint either, but not in the second half. They, Penn State seemed to find a way to do it, but we're hearing things that the Penn State locker room is just besides itself. Well, would you be? Yeah, I, I'd be just like I was against the Virginia the same way, but what a great game. Duke's goalie did not have the best game. And no, it, I think he still only has six saves. Right. I mean, I don't know how many saves he had total, but he had about two or three nice ones. But uh, Penn State stayed there, and look, at the end of the day, it was face-offs. Yeah. All right? Duke doesn't win this game without face-offs. They got them, uh, I think 22 out of 35 or something, and it was enough to give them enough dominance. But, wow, Penn State, it could have been a title for them. They are going to be honorary. All right? But from our viewpoint, T.J. Malone is a graduate. Yeah, he's, All right, he's so done. We don't have to worry about it next year. No, I don't I, think. You never know with COVID. There, there, well, we will be back here in the tunnel in Philadelphia. There, was, there were moments in that game when there was one offensive miracle against another offensive unbelievable play in that back and forth game. The defense didn't really show up. They slowed a bit in the second half. Now, you've talked that You've seen a lot of these games where there's a lot of goals on Saturday and nothing on Monday. Do you, what do you see for this since it's a, a nice, cool day, as you said? It's gorgeous outside. Duke has the advantage. Here we go. The game's going to be a 3 o'clock start. It'll be over 5.30 maybe. And Duke will have that advantage, that two and a half hour advantage on Monday as the number one seed should always have. All right. Sure, no, I think that's a Maryland reference. There. Yes, yes, it is. Listen, I want you got to talk about Jake Moran and T.J. Malone. That combination, they were lethal, Wayne. They were lethal together. They were, but throughout that game, Duke opens a three-goal lead repeatedly. Penn State scores two goals. Dupo, uh, and again, three times I believe that happened. In the end, they they finally tie it up and couldn't get over that hump. Yeah, they had some uh, some unbelievable offense. The combination was great. Penn State keeps running plays to get to get their guy open on a short stick, and it worked time and time and time again. Just wasn't enough to get over the top. Let's not forget about Jake Naso, the face-off guy. Uh, number one, first-team All-American. You know, you and me are Weirman fans, but this guy did it. He also scored two goals. Yeah, number 56. Big difference. I think number 56 would go down as our player of the game because he shifted the competitive balance. We have a press conference to go catch, and then it's the marquee matchup, Notre Dame and Virginia, and we'll be back after that. Good afternoon for the moment from Philadelphia. Great.